Lowell Lake State Park, a short distance east of the entrance to the Magic Mountain Ski Resort in Londonderry, was established more than 40 years ago. But before that, it was a commercial camping ground with a lodge and overnight cabins visitors and vacationers could use. They haven't been used since the 1980s, but a proposed plan by the state's Forests, Park, and Recreation Department envisions possibly rehabbing them and bringing them back for use, along with some other upgrades, such as an improved and expanded parking area and traffic circulation. But the proposal to make some changes at the state park, and to bring back the overnight cabins in particular, has been met with some local concerns from residents who like the 100-acre lake and the 350-acre state park pretty much the way it is now. An open house held recently at the Londonderry Town Hall brought out several residents who gave their feedback on the proposals. But the dialogue between some members of the community and the state officials has been underway for some time now. Currently, a 60-day public comment period on the proposal is in effect, after which decisions will near on which direction things will go in. Recently, we traveled up to Lowell Lake State Park to talk with some of the people who have been involved in the discussion. Erwin Cooperberg is the head of Londonderry's Conservation Commission, and Robert Need is a former town administrator. Both have concerns about some aspects of the state's proposal. The Londonderry Conservation Commission has issued a statement in opposition to elements of the current plan. The state's plan seeks to limit attendance at the park through the use of parking spots, and that's in itself problematic. And I should, as a backdrop, say that the whole problem originates with this exponential growth, this explosion of attendance here at Lowell Lake State Park. Lowell Lake State Park is a beautiful gem in the state park portfolio of properties, and uh, we love it. We live here. Uh, a lot of folks are claiming that we're against the state's plan because we want to keep it to ourselves, and nothing could be further from the truth. We love it, and we think that tourists, folks from out of state, from other parts of Vermont should love it too, and love it the way we do. And the way we love it is in its current state. Historically, Lower Lake has been the scene of a lot of tourist activity. There was a hotel here in the past. There was a campground here for a few decades. Uh, currently, there is no such thing going on, and we believe that it should stay that way, and that historic precedent is not really a reason for things to continue the way they were. If they were, then the entire state of Vermont should be denuded of trees as it was in the 1900s. So things that happened in the past don't necessarily tell us how things should be in the future. I think there's really two issues that are is important to understand about what's being proposed here. The first is the scope and scale of the proposed project. And the second is really the scope of the community response to that proposal. Um, Lowell Lake is, is a relatively small 100-acre lake within a 300-acre park. Um, it has a very diverse um, community of fish, flowers, plants, wildlife. Um, it is to some degree vulnerable because of its size. Um, the plan being proposed by the state seems antithetical to the idea of preserving and protecting that. Uh, what's being proposed is to go from a relatively quiet place, and in fact, the state's own designation, uh, which was given to this lake years ago, was a unique quiet place. And there's not many parks within the park system that have that designation. So instead, what is being proposed is essentially transitioning this park from a quiet place, a tranquil place, a place to observe nature and to recreate to more of a resort kind of environment. They are planning to develop a number of cabins and cottages, as well as the infrastructure that goes with that, including bathhouses, septic systems, lighting, uh, roadways, and an event space, which the state is projecting to rent out for events like weddings and reunions. That will significantly and dramatically change the character of this lake. It will change the experience of this lake for the community and the people who come here. And the second issue is how has the community responded? And I think that's been almost as dramatic. Um, Lowell Lake Concerned Citizens is a grassroots organization um, that got together in response to the plan. And there are people actively participating in that grassroots organization from multiple communities stretching across two counties and beyond. So uh, we've often heard the opposition dismissed as locals against the state, when in reality it really is not a local issue, but it's a Vermont issue. Ethan Phelps is the park's regional manager with the Forest Parks and Recreation Department. The park, which is owned by the state, 
is seeing more use and some improvements, which have been under discussion now for about 20 years, would allow more people to enjoy it without undermining the natural and scenic beauty of it, he says. So right now we're about halfway through a public comment period of um, some con- some concepts that um, will be used to, to ultimately develop a final master plan. Um, and the three concepts that we have out for public comment right now are a concept on uh, improvements to the day use area, uh, like parking, um, storm water collection, uh, the boat launch, um, and some trail realignment to improve uh, uh, universal accessibility and to add um, some bathroom facilities, some composting toilets, which are uh, a pretty big need here. Uh, the other two concepts that are um, out for feedback and up for consideration are two different options for overnight use. Uh, one it is focused around uh, reusing the existing buildings, which were used for uh, about 50 years for overnight accommodation when this was a private camp, um, first as a boys and girls summer camp and then as a family camp um, you know, through its later few decades. Um, and then the, the third concept we're looking at is um, if all those were to go away and to achieve certain setbacks through um, from either um, for new construction, um, constructing a, a new um, group of cabins um, on its own that would be outside of the town's uh, shoreland zoning district and um, would also be outside of the, the jurisdiction of the State Shoreland Protection Act. Um, we haven't really reviewed any results yet, but ultimately when the public comment period is over, you know, certainly we'll look at, um, at the public feedback we receive and all the analysis work that's been done, and those will ultimately feed into a recommendation of what a final plan would look like that would go to our department's commissioner, and then he would make, he would make the call on what's included in that. And with any of the concepts, it's important to remember that they're just concepts um, that we, we're interested in knowing what people are thinking about them. Um, and you know particular elements of certain concepts because it uh, even though there's three concepts laid out it's you know doesn't have to be one concept and everything in that is done it could be you know as simple as just like very basic minor work um, to certain pieces of certain concepts or maybe some concepts in full um, you know I, I don't really without knowing what the feedback is and kind of how the final result is going to be um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot um, of, of contention around the day use area improvements that are made and you know certainly the things that that's generating the most concern and the most feedback um, are the overnight concepts um, if we still have a lot of feed a lot of comments coming in when we approach that deadline uh, we may choose to extend it to make sure that we you know we have um, all the feedback um, that we could get um, then there will be some a period of time to do some analysis of that feedback and um, you know, see see what the comments are, what they what the public is supporting, what the public is really not supporting. The public comment period ends on September 25th, at which point the contours of a final master plan will begin to take shape. For the GNAT TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.